years ago, Guyana welcomed a new era of hope and progress as the PPPC administration returned to office, dedicated to building a nation of resilience, prosperity and unity. There have been transformative achievements in key sectors, propelling our beloved country towards a brighter future for all. An analysis of the achievements of this government thus far was recently explained by President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali when he hosted members of the media for a press conference. Even in the midst of global challenges, we as a nation have been determined to overcome them and make a difference. My government has set itself as a result-driven, action-oriented government. Everything we do is based on quantitative and qualitative results. Situating ourselves in the global context, our government has tirelessly worked towards being a leader in food, climate and energy security, while strengthening Guyana's human and institutional capacity. Guyana's foreign policy objectives encompass safeguarding our sovereignty, pursuing peace and upholding human rights. We have garnered respect globally and have been elected to the UN Security Council. The government over the last three years has worked tirelessly to position Guyana in the international, hemispheric and regional community as a global leader on food security, climate security, energy security, and human development. Indeed, we had to overcome the negative consequences of a group of people trying to steal an election and derail democracy, where the credibility of our country was damaged. That took time and effort. Now let's take a look at the progress we have made in critical areas. As promised in its manifesto, major investments are being made to transform the health of our people by building a world-class healthcare system on the principle of equity. The annual budget for healthcare has increased from 35 billion to 85 billion, an increase of almost 150% in just three years. To put things into perspective, remember that in 1992, Guyana's per capita investment in health was under US $7. That is, we used to invest US $7 for every Guyanese in health. Today, our per capita investment in health is US $800. From US $7 in 1992 to US $800 today. The PPPC government is committed to access to quality medical care for all. New hospitals are being constructed and all existing hospitals are being rehabilitated or reconstructed in the coming years. A new specialized pediatric and maternal hospital is currently under construction. Six new regional hospitals are under construction in region 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Presently. We have a U.S. $97 million project where designs are being completed to build and construct new regional hospitals for four hinterland areas in region 1, 7, 8, and 9. Advancements in education empower our youth with knowledge and skills for the future. Government has made significant investments to enhance infrastructure and increase resources, securing a brighter tomorrow for our children. A five-year strategic operational plan has been developed and costed that will inform the attention given to our students with special needs education. To date, we have exp expanded three billion on textbooks. By the end of this year, all primary secondary school students will have access to a minimum of four textbooks per student due to this investment in the education sector. A total of 4,213 teachers were trained to use a new curriculum at the primary and nursery level. By the end of this year, a total of 4,913 teachers would have completed this training to deliver the new curriculum. Some 87,634 students 
are benefiting from the school feeding program. 42,735 from juice and biscuits and 29,691 from hot meals. 15,208 students receive breakfast. Government, in keeping with its manifesto promise, has also advanced the Guyana's human capacity development agenda. In the Gold Scholarship Program, we have close to 17,000 students who were granted scholarships so far. Only today, we have launched a program where 1,500 teachers will be doing a specialized course with the University of West Indies to enhance their skills in uh, teaching, reading, and comprehension. $8.5 billion has been spent on the Because We Care grant for this year alone, another significant investment in Guyana's children. Let's turn our attention to some of the achievements relating to agriculture and achieving food security. Successful initiatives ensuring food security and a thriving agriculture sector are contributing to self-sufficiency and economic growth in Guyana. Guyana is also emerging as a leader in CARICOM in food and energy security and climate mitigation and adaptation. The PPPC administration has repositioned the agriculture sector as an expanded, diversified, modern, resilient and a competitive sector with a 150% increase in the budgetary allocation, moving from $13.3 billion in 2019 to $33.2 billion in 2023. We are bridging the production gap, ramping up production. Crops such as rice, sugar, expanding the corn and soya production, high value crop, the shade house initiative, wheat trial, spices, expansion of the livestock industry, swine, beef, poultry, black belly ship, fish, sheep, fisheries, establishment of shrimp farm and cage culture farming. These are all new areas that are emerging in a modern agricultural infrastructure landscape to support sustainability and resilience in agricultural food and food production. Government is actively working on building human resource and institutional capacity, particularly focusing on hinterland development to enhance food security and self-sufficiency in those communities. Demonstration sites have been established, providing planting materials and livestock breeds, improved the fencing facilities, and increased access to technical and advisory services for farmers. We are working on bridging the financing gap for low-cost loan programs that will help rice, poultry, and other farmers. Focus program to support capital for formulation for farmers, incentives, tax benefits to facilitate land and equip acquisition of land and equipment to modernize uh, farm and open up opportunity for higher production and high yield. Government is also working on expanding agricultural production by opening up new lands through farm-to-market access roads resulting in more than 50,000 acres of new land for production. In the realm of agricultural diversification, government is working to expand a menu of products and produce, including high-value items such as brackish water shrimp, corn, soya, broccoli and cauliflower. We are also supporting the expansion of storage capacity in our country. Storage for grains, cold storage, packaging, distribution centers. All of this, we are working with the private sector so that we can create a state-of-the-art regional food hub here in Guyana. We are also working on innovative ways of ensuring that young people and women are included in the agricultural diversification and agricultural plan, creating uh, agricultural entrepreneurs or food production entrepreneurs. The Shade House program is one such program where we have been able to provide opportunity for more than 100 young people. Guyanese have been able to benefit from strong economic growth 
which has created job opportunities, improved the livelihoods, driving overall progress. These have been made possible through sound strategies by the PPPC administration. Ghana economy has almost tripled since the end of 2020, with our nominal GDP moving from 1.1 trillion in 2020 to 3.1 trillion at the end of 2022. Of course, this is largely owing to the startup of oil production at the Lisa Unity FPSO. Ghana is now the fastest growing economy in the world. For the period 2023 to 2026, Ghana is projected to grow at an average 25% annually. Ghana non-oil growth is now projected at 7.9% this year, building on the 11.5% growth recorded last year. Despite challenges, Guyana managed to grow its economy and put measures in place to re reduce the burden of elevated prices on citizens, while at the same time prudently managing financial resources. At the end of 2022, Guyana debt-to-GDP ratio stood at 24.6%, down from 38.9% a year prior demonstrating government's commitment to prudent fiscal management of the country's resources. In under three years, the PPPC has delivered on its promises, working tirelessly to ease the burden of the cost of living for our citizens. Over 200 taxes and fees imposed by the previous administration were fully removed in our first budget. Government has also reinstated electricity and water subsidies benefiting over 28,000 pensioners and took a decisive action to increase old age pension by 61% and restored and increased the Because We Care grant. The disciplined services were also granted a tax-free bonus for one month, which had been taken away by the previous government. Moreover, our commitment to job creation has surpassed expectations as we continue to expand opportunities for all. President Ali and his government have advanced the housing development in Guyana, providing safe and comfortable homes for our people. There have been vast improvements in water management, ensuring clean and accessible water for all communities through the construction of new wells throughout Guyana. Total investment in infrastructure in new and existing housing areas increased from $17.2 billion in 2021 to an estimated 53.3 billion in 2023, an increase of almost 340%. We have upgraded almost 69.4 kilometers of roads with an additional 341 kilometers planned for 2023. From 2021 to 2022, we have constructed 425 kilometers of new roads with an additional 660 kilometers planned for 2023. And this is only in the housing sector I'm speaking about. From 2021 to 2022, 19.55 kilometers of highway was constructed with an additional 17.6 kilometers planned for 2023. Specifically, 1.6 kilometer of the four lane connector of Great Diamond is in progress. While procurement is underway, for 16 kilometers of four-lane highway from Great Diamond to Craig and then to Land of Canaan. Since the PPPC resumed the office, more than 23,698 house lots have been allocated. The housing sector alone has supported more than 50,000 jobs. Given the average price for house lots and the actual cost of investment in infrastructure by the government, an average low-income allotty receives a 97% subsidy from the government. A low middle income, a lottie, is 74% subsidy from the government. This is the investment the government is making on behalf of the people. Every time someone is allocated a house lot, that is a share of investment the government is putting in on your behalf to give you an asset that carries a higher uh, net value that increases your own net value and of course work as a catalyst for wealth creation. In relation to water, government has set and is meeting a number of goals in relation to sustainable water management, 
water infrastructure and access to safe, reliable and affordable supply of water and adequate sanitation services to improve living standards. To ensure availability and sustainable management of water sanitation for all, has invested since 2020 more than $27 billion in this sector. Under the Public Sector Investment Program for the Portable Water Supply Sector from 2020 to, to date, government has provided the following resources. Coastal Water Supply Program, $19 billion. Hinterland Water Supply Program, $2.9 billion. Urban Water and Sewage Program, more than $3.7 billion. The government has invested heavily in the implementation of a U.S. $200 million coastal water treatment program, which will provide improve the water quality and the level of service to 260,000 persons or 65,000 households. More than 30,000 residents gained access to potable water supply for the first time. And to achieve the reduction in the gap in access between coastal and inland communities, government has procured three new drill rigs between 2020 and 2022, allowing communities in all 10 administrative regions of Guyana to receive improved and increased access to safe water supply. More than 300 public wells have been constructed nationwide. Government has committed to drill more than 30 new hinterland wells, along with the installation of appropriate an appropriate number of PV systems. Currently, Government of Guyana is seeking funding for the construction of a major wastewater treatment facility in the city of Georgetown. New wells and water systems have been constructed in several communities in regions 1, 7, 8, and 9. This has increased the safe drinking water access for hinterland population by 75%. Responsible management of our oil and gas resources is another of the government's top priorities, ensuring sustainable practices and the protection of our environment for generations to come. Guyana's total recoverable reserves are over 11 billion barrels. Crude oil reserves have been ranked 17th in the world and third in Latin America. Currently, Guyana crude oil production, which includes Elisa Unity and Elisa Destiny, Average is about 400 barrels per day. Our oil projection, if goals are met, production from Starbrook would average 1.2 million barrels per day by the end of 2027. Government is looking to the modernization of Guyana's health, education and agriculture and the fueling of the new economy and expansion of the economy from revenues from the oil and gas sector. Guyana's journey of progress has so far achieved the remarkable strides across various sectors. President Ali's administration stands a resolute in its commitment to a future where no one is left behind. Together, we forge ahead, creating a nation of opportunities and equality. Government's vision is unwavering and its determination is unstoppable building a brighter tomorrow where every citizen's dreams find wings to soar and where unity paves the way for a prosperous and inclusive Guyana.